My name is Evelyn Gitao. I'm the Director for Research Capacity Strengthening at the African Population and Research Center here in Nairobi. We're a Pan-African organization that tries to use evidence and generate evidence for population and health issues. My main position is really trying to build the capacities that are needed to answer the questions in terms of population and health, broadly speaking. When I joined as a NEF fellow, I was actually an active researcher at the Kenya Medical Research Institution, where I was working more about actually doing the actual research. So I was um, looking at biomarkers for severe disease, trying to see how we can better um, diagnose children to ensure that they get the treatment that they need right away and get more specific treatment. In doing the work that I was doing, I realized one of the things that we had a challenge of is trying to apply um, technologies that are advanced on the African continent, mainly because we did not have the right resources in terms of the environment. And importantly, we also didn't have enough people, a critical, critical mass of people working. So the work I do today is actually as a result of my experience trying to undertake the research that I was doing from the training that I had received in, in, the, in the north. So I, I was trained in Liverpool, um, was a high, highly trained um, chemist in an area of, uh, that is not um, really well developed on the continent, at least at the time it wasn't. So I spend my time thinking around what do we need in terms of the people, in terms of who should be doing the research. So we partner with universities to try and ensure that faculty are being trained to undertake research in universities, because one thing we do know is that universities on the continent are not as research intensive as they should be, so that they can become the people who are generating the right evidence and the right knowledge. So that's where I work. I work around looking at how we make um, we build the right capacities in terms of people and how we build the right capacities in terms of the environment so that we can get a supportive environment that builds the intellectual capacity that we need on the continent, not sending people away because the impact of sending people away is not the right impact that we need. The impact is getting enough people working on the continent addressing the issues that we need. questions we keep asking ourselves is that if we develop the right research capacities on the continent, will people utilize them? And for that to happen, we have to actually undertake relevant research that is relevant both at policy level but also relevant for the society. So we're definitely ready because we know we have the challenges, we, we can identify our own challenges appropriately. Now what I'm not sure the policy makers have internalized is that um, it takes money to get the right impact. It takes money to build capacity. And it takes time to build the right capacities to make the impact that we need. So are we ready at a policy level to build the right environments? We're not there yet. But it is really important for us to actually start showing um, the importance of the research capacity that we're building. So we need our researchers here on the continent engaging more with the public, engaging more with policymakers ensuring that people understand the relevance of their research. Because we all agree the research that's been done on the continent is relevant. We all, m many of us, address our research questions around the relevance of the sustainable development goals. Vision 2030 here in Kenya, for example, is one thing that we have always looked at. And now we're talking about the big four in Kenya. Universal health coverage. Researchers are trying to um, look at innovations and interventions that will help address universal health coverage in different ways. Sanitation, um, water, climate change, you know, health is all encompassing. If you're looking at health outcomes, you're looking at what people eat, where they live, how they live. And, um, you know, under the NEF community, we have some researchers who are doing great work around sustainable cities, urbanization, you know, engineering technologies that would address some of the health issues that we would like to address. So, yeah. The gaps that we identify is that the pipeline is not ready to actually address the issues as we'd want them to be. So we have to actually go back to the building blocks of how do we get people who can become the critical thinkers to undertake the research that we want them to undertake. So the teachers who are teaching these children that who, who will then build the pipeline for researchers, who, where are they being trained? How are they being trained? So already at the beginning of the pipeline, we have a problem. We're not teaching teachers to become the right teachers. We're not, the base of the teachers is not right in terms of critical thinking. And then we come to the universities. Who and how are we engaging in terms of research? 
the students? Are they being exposed to the new theories? Are they being exposed to an environment that allows them to think beyond and outside the box? The universities on the continent have big issues because they have um, a resource issue, they've overexpanded in a very short time. So that pu pushes away from teaching critical thinkers. It doesn't allow for the time that is needed to have critical thinkers. In a class of 200 biochemists, you're not going to get the intentional um, space that is needed for people to think about biochemistry and how to apply it to society. When I went to university in, um, early in the years, a class, a biochemistry class in the University of Nairobi was 20 people. A biochemistry class currently with the same resources, the same lecturers probably, and using the same textbooks is a class of 200. So how we, we've really moved away from what is the right building block in terms of building critical skills. We've, we've taken away the quality, we've taken away the time needed, and we've expanded in areas that shouldn't be expanded but should be actually become more focused. So those are things that we need to do. We need to rethink our university systems. We need to rethink those who are training the, the, the lecturers. We need to rethink those who are training the students who are joining university. And there's, there's a lot that needs to be done to actually address those issues. The government, of course, is the bedrock in terms of policies and reg regulation. And we should be always talking to them in terms of how we build and change things. So if government is not changing, how they think about the policies or how they implement some of these policies, then we're not going to get there. So the first place in terms of building the right environment is the policies that are in place for education, for training, for research, for tax breaks, for um, exchange of ideas amongst each other. You know, if we're talking about an African network of researchers, we need them to be able to engage with each other without having the, 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 how do I put it, without having to have the issues around visas coming from, you know, if you want to go to South Africa, it takes you 30 days. The mobility, yeah, the free mobility. The free trade is something that will enable some of our local, um, local talent to sell the innovations that they have. These are things government can do. They may be able to fund, but that shouldn't be the primary thing that we're going to um, to, to the governments for. What we want them to do is enable that environment that will allow for the free trade, free mobility, etc. For industry, it's a bit tricky because industry, they're in, they're in it for business. They're in it to talk about things, about how they make money, how they get a return on investment. And I'll go back to government on the return on investment because that's something we need to think about. But industry, we need to approach them showing them, you know, I'm working in malaria, I'm a researcher in malaria. If you have fewer people getting malaria, you're going to have a stronger workforce, you're going to have um, l less, you know, for example, if the Kenya Revenue Authority want to look at how much money they collect in taxes for people, one of the things they want to look at is how many people stay home and we have to pay for them because the labor laws, you can't fire people for being sick. Yet we have morbidity and mortality levels that are very high. People spend a lot of time staying home when they should be at work, and you have to pay them. So thinking about why you support research is, number one, to address issues around a stronger workforce. Um, secondly, you, are, you support research for the interventions that you need to address some of the issues. And thirdly, being, using research on the continent to address the issues in our context. But as of now, yes, the research that's been undertaken um, out of the um, continent is research that is relevant, but it may, may not be as well contextualized. And that's where we get to the point that implementation is not as good as it should be. So it, it, we do have to engage industry and have that conversation about the return on investment. This, these are the things that you could do stronger workforce, which is what we need. We then have the issues around the relevance and the market. And that's what we need to be thinking about. I'm currently new in this research capacity strengthening role. I'm building a network of people who I'm working with. The NEF has allowed me to meet and interact with great researchers as well as interact at government level. So what I see myself in the next five years is actually providing the evidence to tell policymakers these models work. And please note I said these models, not one model. There are several models that could work in different contexts. So being able to do that research around how we build capacity is one of the things that I want to do for the next five years and spend my time saying this has been tested in this area and it works this way. If it's in engineering, 
you know, you, what we know for sure in terms of capacity is that there's a huge gap in the content that's being taught right now. So the engineers are being taught to become project managers because that's the only thing that they have been trained to think is successful. So thinking about the different areas in terms of the whole continuum of, you know, building a, the economy and health and, and how we become a healthy continent is really important for us. So that's what I see myself doing for five years is providing the evidence that is needed to show that there are different models that work on the continent and showing how they work and then maybe hopefully um, engaging policymakers and the industry and people who would be interested in financing capacity building programs being able to show them the evidence and the impact of research capacity in 10 years you know um, once you 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 in my opinion if you if you set a program of research and research around how you build capacity, then in 10 years I see myself taking a step back <laughs> because others will have gotten the capacities needed, but really providing the, the, the leadership now at a higher societal level and saying, we have now achieved some of what we think we need to do in terms of research capacity strengthening, but now doing it at a higher level, maybe being in the policymaker end and saying, we can now make this change because I have the experience.